Hey everyone, I was at the post office today mailing some 12 and a half books out to some of our listeners. And the woman, the post office lady, Liz, who I always talk to, was like, my daughter's having the toughest time selling her art. And I'm like, oh, what does she paint? What does she make? How can I help? And I realized like, damn, like Heather and I don't even know how to find an artist. And you guys are always asking us. So we had to do the homework to help you out. And we're going to dig into it right now. What's up, family? Listen, NFTs, they originally became super popular in the art world. And I think a lot of times our mind immediately goes to artistic work when we think of NFTs. But if you've been hanging out with us for any period of time, you know that we have been trying to expand your mindset of what NFTs can be. And it's not just limited to artists, meaning if you don't have that creativity bone in you or you don't have that artistic bone in you, you can still make NFTs but you might need to find somebody who can help you with the artistic side. But what do you do if you don't got a bunch of friends, a bunch of people up in your neighborhood who are artists? How do you find one? I don't you know. You turn to us because today we are going to give you three places to find potential artists for your potential products. But first, check out this clip from our Q&A episode. And this one's from an email from Corey McLeaf. I'm a strength and conditioning coach and personal trainer. I'm hoping to find ways to use NFTs to outreach fitness in a new way. I was curious if you have any advice on finding an artist to help create NFT art. I have figured out how to create my own NFT, but I don't have the artistic and digital experience to create pieces. I really love Heather. Does Corey need to make art to use NFTs for fitness as a service? No, you can if you want to. And I'm really curious. I'm really excited to see some creative people be creative in this space and think outside of the box. I love art. I think it's great. I think there's an opportunity there. But you just said you were a fitness dude. You know what I mean? And unless that's just like your side hustle, which I don't think it is because you wouldn't be looking for an artist. Think of some other things you could do. I mean, why not ha hire a photographer? Why not do some cool videos of you doing push-ups or sit-ups? You could even met your own plan. I would recommend starting with in your own network and asking people for personal recommendations over finding some random person online because you never know what you're going to get. I mean, we were just on a call earlier today of people who met online and sometimes it doesn't go that well and there's disputes. So I would really start within your own network and make sure you're working with people who you really, really connect with. But with that being said, I want to challenge you to think outside of the box a little bit with your NFTs. Like, why do you want an artist? Now, if you've seen anything we've done on YouTube before or any of the NFTs we've sold, you could tell that we are not artists and we don't do anything traditional when it comes to drawings or pictures. Okay. So you can use any digital file. So be creative. Yeah. I think Rich should speak for himself because obviously I'm very, very artistic. You can see my little stick man figures on my Instagram, but listen, where do we go when we need anything in life? The interwebs. Anything. The internet. That's exactly right. So tip number one, we're going to go to Twitter at JDM19958. It says there are a lot of freelance sites out there, Fiverr being an example. And he touched on this, which we'll dig into a little bit more. Just make sure you take your time and make sure that people show you their work before you hire them, which should seem like a given, my friends. But listen, just because somebody's say, saying they're an artist and they have an art degree and all that, we yeah, need to if see. If someone's some like, you're going to love it, that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So Fiverr, Upwork, and listen, there's this really cool website that I found called Dribble with three Bs dot com. And the thing that I like about this site is you can search by the art. So I personally love penguins. I love penguins. I think penguins are man's best friend. Okay. I don't know why we don't have more of them around here, but if I wanted to make an NFT about penguins, I could literally just put in penguins in the search bar and I see an insane amount of art. I'm talking like MP4s. I'm talking regular JPEGs. I'm talking animated drawings, paintings, all kinds of different ways to see penguins. And so then I can directly contact the artist. So I love this penguin. There's two penguins right here. They're hugging each other. And I see that Ala Romanova drew this. Um, I can see that 1.9 thousand people viewed it. I can see that 37 people hearted it. It's kind of like, I don't know, I feel like a social media platform for artists. It's pretty cool. 
cool. So I can directly contact Ayla right here and start a conversation with her. So I really liked that resource. I just want to kind of walk through some of the categories because this is actually pretty cool. I'm checking it out. I actually have two points real quick. So, but first I'll read. There's animation, there's branding, there's illustration, print, typography. And then if you go to filters, you could put in tags or, or search essentially what Heather did for penguins. But there's a place where you could enter a color. Okay, so we have a very specific newbies green. So maybe we'd put that in there if we wanted to design. Time frame, it says now, this past week, this past month, this past year. So you could see like what that activity has been over a certain amount of time made with and it says all apps. So they got Adobe XD, Figma, Sketch, Unsplash. So you know some of the tools that you're using in case you have a preference and then downloads Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, etc. Here's the one thing I want to say, Heather. I'm all about this and this actually looks fantastic. However, this is why the barrier to entry is so low for anyone to start a project. And this is why you and I do crazy Preach. shit, like get on a unicycle, do the one chip challenge, just some of the crazy stuff we do because this is kind of easy and we could definitely find something we like, but this is at the same time a reason why the market is flooded and why you maybe yep, we've been exactly. seeing kind of a bearish market in the month of February, 2022. Exactly. I 100% agree. Uh, what's our next place outside of freelance? Oh, we can go? The discords. <laughs> <laughs> you love Discord. Discord, Richard. Discord, Discord. All right. So like, look, there's certain channels that are specifically for matchmaking for this exact thing. Now, Dude, beware, of course. I love like... you. I met you on Discord. <laughs> Heather wanted me to it's sing at, this, uh, at the beginning of this, by the way, but I declined. Yeah, he wouldn't do it. Who wants to hear Rich sing? Find us over on Instagram at NFTs for newbies. Um, I'll put up a poll on the day that this goes live and uh, we'll take a vote. And I can tell you who wants to hear it. Keith Sweat. Mm -mm -mm. No, but, all right. Anyway. Turn that so into look, you could go to you, you, you could go to the discords. You could look under team of different discord channels. Meaning, I could go to World of Women. I could go to Boss Beauties. I could go to Base Fish Mafia. I could go to team, and I could be like, who's the actual artist behind some of this stuff? You could also just literally D Y O R do your own research if you have not heard that before, and just be like, cool. You could go to the website of a project you like and just be like, hey, do you have any apprentices who are making art like you or anything like that? So there are a lot lot of artists still looking for work. Starving artists is still a thing because now there's a new, entirely new landscape of the NFT world that is screaming for actual artists and not necessarily some generative rendered bullshit. So that is what I would say about that discord. A hundred percent. Okay. So our very last tip and this, I, I don't want you to brush over because I think it's really important in full transparency. If I were looking for an artist, this is exactly what I personally would do. I would start within my own network of people that I trust and ask them for referrals. And the reason that I'm saying this, yes, art is important. Yes, you know, whatever. But to me, character is the most important thing and somebody that I can trust and rely on. And there's been so many conversations that I've seen on Twitter and Discord about people just getting completely screwed by people on their team because they hadn't really built a relationship. There was, again, that FOMO, that panic, I've got to find somebody. And they were basing their decision-making process simply on the art. And of course, course, the art is important. You don't want some stanky NFT representing your business and your stuff, right? But also too, I want to work with somebody who I know is going to treat me fairly with agreed upon compensation. These are things we need to talk about. Depending on your character development, this, they're going to be spending hours with you. And when you give them feedback about their hat, are they going to get pissy at you and be like, well, you know what? We only agreed upon one version of this hat. Screw you. You know what I mean? Like, are they actually going to work with you and give you what you love? So I want to say something on compensation. Yeah. Like you better have a budget in mind. And if you are just like, if your first question is what's the cheapest, then you're probably not on the right foot, right? Like be prepared or be Come prepared on. to give equity, be prepared to determine what they're going to get on the mint or royalty. After all, like the artist is like the unsung hero of so many projects. It's like ridiculous, man. So yeah. just keep that in yeah. mind, like be prepared to make a compelling offer, not a fucking bullshit offer. And we'll move on from there. Can I get into my acronym? <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to add one thing again, what we said at the very beginning, think creatively. It doesn't have to be a regular artist. And photographers, there's a lot of photographers who need work too. We got sent a really cool MP4 from an artist. David, it's over on Instagram at 
weirdo hipster, which you know I'd be loving to be some weirdo hipsters. Come on, David. <laughs> sent us a message of an MP4, a really cool video that he made for the show. That could be an NFT. So there's so many creatives and artists out there. And I think too, if your budget is a little bit, I don't know, I've never hired like a, an artist artist, but I feel as though there could be some, you know, other creative freelancers out there who can create cool stuff and maybe be a little bit more cost effective for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, did we even mention just go to Twitter and type in hashtag NFT artist. No. Like I did that and there's a lot of people who just use the hashtag and there's people whose art it is. So you could do something like that. You know, we've had artists on the show decline at decline um, with the E at the end on Twitter. Happy Land Gummy Bears. I mean, yep. like they have they have someone they didn't do the art. So there's that. And I, I have this acronym and I have to tell a very quick story. This acronym is from a career coach that my wife and I once had this older guy really just kind of ridiculous and, and pompous dude. I don't even remember how we got introduced. So we went to New York. I hope he doesn't we went to New York. This. He picked us up. We had lunch. We went, went to his house for dinner. And, you know, it was, it was significant. This, this dude has worked with very high level people. Well, the first thing he said, he's like, I know you really like Gary Vaynerchuk. He's like, he's the Pied Piper of whatever, whatever. It was like condescending loosely. And then I was like, whatever, dude. Yeah. And then he said something about the chief heart officer, who's a friend of mine. And he said, I, he'll never hear this. I don't give a shit. He's like, oh, Oh, he's like, why are you even wasting your time with that? She's dirty toilet water. I was like, <gasps> bro. So Yo. I kind of let it go because I'm like, we just invested a bunch. I, I mean, I guess I could have called it quits right there, but I was like, let's see what happens. So he's giving us all this advice, talking about our plans, blah, 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 blah. And then we're at dinner and we do this thing. I even made some content uh, for him. And he told a friend of mine who I recommended him to before I actually met him because I'm an idiot like that. He told my friend, he goes, I don't know if I could work with a guy like Rich. He didn't butter his bread correctly at dinner. And I was like, <laughs> bro, like the fact that I was even using utensils is a plus. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get back to this artist thing, but this is a really interesting, like I was taught when I was younger, and I believe this with everything in my being, that the way people talk about other people around you yep. is the way that they talk about yeah. you. I mean, he talked people. to a friend it's about amazing. me. amazing. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing how he was dissing a great woman that we, you know, yeah. we have a lot of respect yeah. for. And then he turned around and did it. Crazy. Week. So y'all get it together. That, Read I mean, how to win friends and influence. This, this was not worth the money, uh, but I didn't remember this acronym. Uh, and it was Franks. And F is for so, was his name frank no 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 but the that acronym he gave awesome. me for networking or, or for you know kind of reaching out to people who you need help from you would do this on like an excel sheet you'd list out all the friends you could potentially reach out out to the r would be relatives like do you have any relatives who are even remotely kind of in the peripheral or laterally connected to what you need a is for acquaintances you know people you know but you don't really have like phone calls with them but you know them or maybe you met them at a conference or something like that network just think of like your linkedin network or your instagram network or discords things like that. K, I don't, and rem I didn't remember, but Heather put kids school, which makes sense actually, because hello, like that's how you meet a lot of people. It's like, hey, oh, you're a realtor? Awesome. Like when I'm dropping someone off, what do you do? Or when you're at a kid's birthday party. Well, and if you have kids in college, yeah. you know what I oh, mean? True. Your, your kids are in college or in high school. The last one is S. I didn't remember what that was. And Heather and I said just strippers. So just ask some strippers. You know what I'm saying? So just ask some strippers some stuff. And I think that's it though. So are we good, Heather? Or are we good to go to our listener question? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're good right now, but listen, y'all, this is the whole point of it. There are people out there. There are so many creatives who, who need work, who'd be willing to work with you. Just the, the most important thing I think is just take your time with it and make sure you work with people that you really know, like, and trust and give some opportunity out there for some creatives. I think this is really, really cool. We have a random question from a listener. Unless you have anything else. I don't, Richard. I don't uh, just good luck. And okay. hopefully that helps. Yeah. So linked up in our show notes, you can see two different forms. Ask us an NFT question for a future episode or if you want to ask us a random question just to get to know us a little bit more, you can do that as well. This is Dave Montour. And it is at Dave underscore Montour over on Twitter. He asks, what event or experience made you the person that we heard today? I'll go first with this. I think I'm viewing this from the creative side. I know that y'all, I've been joking that I'm not a creative because I'm not a traditional artist, but I spent years as a photographer, a freelance photographer. I'm not talking about not doing doing it on the side. I'm talking about full time, tons of shoots a month, traveling with it, everything. Like it was my life for a few 
few years. I absolutely loved it. And I knew the importance of working with people that you really vibed with because it's interesting how the product actually gets better when the energy in the creation was good. And I think that's why I enjoy this podcast so much is because Rich and I really have fun making it. And you can see that as a result with the final product that we have. So that's my answer to this. I think being a photographer has kind of helped me appreciate the whole creative process and really wanting to work with people I like. My, the person who shaped who you're hearing, I guess, uh, and how I feel about this is probably the Marine Corps side of me, which is like, you got to be resourceful. Like we never had everything we needed. I mean, we've never fucking had shit compared to like some of the others. Um, so it's like, we had to like do more with less, right? We had to do more with less. And that is part of like why we're badass men and women. That being said, like when it comes to stuff like this, like you cannot say I need an artist and just like go on Twitter once and look and be like, I couldn't find anyone. You know what I mean? Like you got to be resourceful. And the reason I'm kind of really being a little strong on this point is because there are teenagers, people in their young 20s who are getting after it. And like, they're looking at it as like, of course, I'm going to find an artist, like I'm going to have a 100 to choose from. And you might be that person who's in their mid 30s trying to freaking flip your life after you've been at some suck shit job for however long. And you're trying to just like break out and become rich and think you're going to end up on a beach for the rest of your life, which is probably what you don't want anyway. So the point is this, there's people who are hungry and resourceful. And if you do not find yourself in a position where you are adamant about solving a problem that you have and being resourceful about how you are going to get to the solutions, then you will probably fail and you will probably have one of those projects. You, you are probably the same person who's going to imagine that you don't need to build a community, that you hate Discord and are not going to go on Discord because you hate it that much, even though we do too, but it's been very good for us. So resourcefulness, yeah. that's where it's coming from. I really want everyone to just always know that like 90% of the time you could solve the problem yourself. Come on, come on. Speaking of Discord linked up in the show, notes. You can connect with us there. We're doing weekly Q&As, live calls with you guys. We'd love to see you there. See you soon. <laughs>